Okay, welcome back again to Into the Breach, episode 10. So, last mission, we finished securing the archive here and unlocked this new island at Detritus Disposal. Now, I've never seen this island before. Uh, in the previous game, we made it through the first three islands and this is back in episode 4. Our team lost too many buildings on the ice island and basically failed to save humanity and had to make a hasty leap back, you know, forward in time, back to where they came from in the future, uh, to save the mechs. And so this game, we've been through these three islands, we're doing much better, we've got uh, full power in the grid right now, and we could go straight to the final mission, which I've also never seen, but seeing as a brand new island I've never seen, I'm keen to go to that later. I think jumping straight, to, jumping to the final mission as soon as you can, which is after you've uh, cleared two islands, you can do the final mission. Doing that seems more like a thing to do if you're just trying to grind through the different achievements or uh, you know unlock more of the different squads because there's a whole ton of different squads that you can unlock that you need achievements for. Um, but that's what I'm doing here. Here I'm trying to fit, learn the game, find out what it's got, and basically have have fun with it rather than uh, grind for anything in particular. So, Detritus Disposal. Detritus Tech can break down any matter into its base elements. Their factory cities are devoted to waste removal and recycling. The CEO is Vikram Singh. The environment is industrial and the threat scanner shows leapers, hornets, fireflies, uh, the scion that gives bonus health, I forget the actual name of it. And I'm not sure what the next one is. It doesn't look, is that a scarab? It doesn't look quite right. Maybe it is. And a spidery thing that I've never seen before. And a leader that I don't think I've seen before. This is this is interesting. It looks like we're going to be encountering some entirely new types of mech here. So, uh, let's jump right to it. Our accommodations are sparse, Commander, but you and the Blitzkrieg are welcome here. To quote our corporate motto, Detritus is at your disposal. Oh dear, that's a terrible, terrible motto. You should change that, or I might have to not save you. All right, so this is a differently shaped island. Um, we have choice of two missions, pumping station, which looks like this. The vats in this region contain chemicals poisonous to the VEC. Breach the containment vats and the VEC will vacate the sector. So bonus objectives is destroy the acid vats. Uh, unfortunately, acid is bad for us as well, because if we get acid on our units, uh, it stops them firing their weapons and they have to repair to clean it, so it makes us miss a turn, basically. It's pretty annoying. Uh, and there's also pools of acid on the ground here, which we can walk past with no problem, or, you know, through if you like, uh, but if we stop on them, again, our weapons will get clogged. Uh, worse than water, if we stop in water, we just can't shoot that turn. If we stop in acid, we can't shoot again until we repair, so... I'm not sure if we actually also take health damage from it, but it's not something I really want to try. Uh, and I guess those are the two bats in the middle. To destroy rather than protect, which is an interesting twist on. Normally we have a task to destroy extra things rather than blow them up. Okay. And the wasteland is the other one. These acid pools are being hit by the VEC, but the VEC seem to be adapting to the chemicals. We need to stop the VEC before they develop an immunity. So kill at least seven enemies and protect the coal plant. So, a rep and a power. We don't, we're not short on power, that never hurts to get more because it just bumps up our grid defense. Um, but, uh, I'm more inclined to go for the two rep. Now this one does have these pools of acid here which we can pull or push enemies into which will be fun. And that'll probably make the, the objective kill at least seven a lot easier if you can just like, sit Isabel down here and pull enemies in or something like that. Or even use her new cannon to push things in, as long as we're careful not to have the uh, the back blast from it push her back into the pit. Um, yeah. Or actually push into the building, yeah, that's the... Hmm, not so good. These two buildings make, they make the whole dropping things in pits of acid a little harder. I think I'm gonna do the pumping station. Now, it's got buildings around the edges, and in the middle of these two, these two vats of acid. It doesn't look to me. This one's got buildings in the middle. This one's more useful. This one building uh, the building chain ability, the lightning whip would be more useful because you're more likely to get enemies 
around these clusters of buildings. Whereas the singular buildings and these clusters on the edge, it's, it's very unlikely that the chaining through buildings is going to be useful. So I've got two reactor cores to spend, and I'm just going to review the uh, mechs we've got here to see how we can spend them so that we can be more effective before we start a mission. So Zappy Kill has the electric whip, which is currently doing three damage. As I said, there's a building chain option for an extra core, but I don't think we're going to need it this mission. Uh, in addition, we've got the Vice Fist, which flips an enemy behind us, uh, which currently does one damage. Now, for three cores, which I don't have available, well, not unless I show something else off, I could make it do three damage. Uh, but normally, when I want to do three damage, the Electric Whip is just as, just as good. Occasionally, the Electric Whip is, you know, threatens to hurt an ally badly, and so... Vice Fist or something is a better alternative. I don't have three cores to spare. If I had three cores to spare, I would absolutely spend it on that, but I don't. I might... I'm, I'm inclined maybe to spend a core on an extra move because Zappy Kill always needs to be up, up close and personal with the enemies, so extra move is probably the most valuable thing after flying. Flying lets us go past obstacles directly. So already tends to save movement points, but an extra move makes that even better. Uh, grapple Pi! Grapple Pi, okay, so last last mission, uh, sorry, last episode, I bought this new unstable cannon weapon. It was on sale, it only cost me one rep. Uh, it's interesting because it does two damage to enemies, that's nice, and it does one damage to myself. Now, because uh, this, this mech uh, has built-in armor, the de in the default state of this unstable cannon, it won't damage myself. It uh, does two damage to the enemy and just pushes pushes it, uh, Isabel backwards without damaging. As the little gift shows, uh, it shows zero because of the armor. It needs power, um, but I'm going to power it. I want to use it. I, I've been I've been using the airstrike, which is great. Uh, I save you know save our asses a lot. But the unstable cannon is going to be more generally useful. The airstrike is a single use in an entire battle, whereas this we can use every turn if it does better for us than the grappling hook. And for the moment, I'm going to turn that off so I can power this up. I may come back and uh, spend more cores here. I need to. I need to see what else I've got available. Rockstar, health, study shield. So we've got a study shield. So again, I still don't think we need to upgrade health because Rockstar is never in the middle of the action. One day I'm going to regret this. I know one day I'm going to re regret this. Maybe maybe when I get the next the next core I get, I'll, I will upgrade Rockstar's health. But for the moment, there's nothing here I want to spend cores on. So... This is tempting. Upgrade is three damage. Unfortunately, that also means it will do one damage to Isabel every time I fire. Because the armor will absorb one, but not both. Of the, of the self damage, but it'll do three damage to enemies. That's good. You could fire it four times before you die. Uh, the alternative is the if we had three cores, if we had lots of cores, then I could just get plus one damage to the enemy without increasing self damage. But I don't. I don't have that many cores to spend. I could spend two cores and say plus health, uh, plus one damage. That's an option for my two cores. I might want to keep shield ally. Instead, I don't know. Shield ally is rarely useful. I'm certainly not going to need it this mission. Um, what about uh, one or two cores here? So what, if I spend one core here... Again, getting this... I don't have enough cores. One core on the move. Now, the other downside is the Lightning Whip. Because Isabel tends to move into places so that she can pull enemies into a chain for the uh, into a position where the lightning the electric whip can chain Isabel tends to take damage from the electric whip and right now the electric whip is dealing three damage so she would take two hit or two hits every time the she's pulling things in to the chain it's not great so I think I do need to give her an extra core and upgrade her health so just so that we're never you know we're never at risk of, of seriously damaging her mech from the chain. We can afford to lose some of the points there. And I know I was talking here about giving you an extra move. Let's have another look at the map. 
There's not many obstacles, but there's all those acid pits. I don't know. I don't know. I am thinking... There are all those little pools of acid. I'm thinking the extra move is probably going to be useful for that. I'm tempted to say plus one damage here, now that we've got the extra health, but, you know, I already said that's to protect from lightning whip. So let's... Let's throw an extra core here. And again, if we change our mind later, we can maybe put it towards extra damage here or something. And that's our two cores spent. Let's go defend the pumping station. So this is... Oh, it's a crab. Uh, okay, that's that's different from the scarab. It launches an artillery attack on two tiles instead of one. And the alpha one does three damage on two tiles. Nice, so we've got three alphas to be in with, which is silly. Um, two alpha fireflies, an alpha crab, and this ordinary crab. So, and we're going to destroy these acid vats. They've got two hit points, and I assume when we destroy them, they're going to spread acid all around them. Uh, it seems likely. It doesn't actually tell us. So, I definitely don't want to destroy them by uh, going up and stand by standing next to them. So I'm probably going to want to throw rocks at them in order to destroy them. Or maybe shoot them with the with Isabel's new cannon. That's also an option. So, well, from a distance. Uh, I'm going to put Isabel here because we're probably going to be, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Well, let's see, we'll see. Let's, let's just start. Let's just see what happens. Let's not overthink it. I usually overthink it. Time forward, yay! Well, we'll hope we can uh, get that. Alright, so what's the deal with acid on enemies? Uh, creating acid weapon damage against this unit is doubled. All other damage is unaffected. Okay, so it's 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 the alpha crab. That's great. Weapon damage is doubled. So one hit from say lightning is going to uh, kill it, and so we could lightning both of these together for an instant kill. Um, now the interesting thing is they're both targeting these two tiles. Now because they target two tiles, it's not enough to just move Bethany out of the way. And Bethany will move out of the way. Uh, but a lightning will kill them both. That's quite a nice situation to be in. Now, two alpha fireflies are also a pain. How can I deal with them? I no longer have artillery. An artillery strike here would push one into the water. Problem solved. But that is not a thing that we have available anymore. We have rocks, which can push them around. So, it does what? Three damage. So, for example, if I move Isabel out of the way, if I drop a rock on this firefly, it'll hit this firefly for three. It'll push this one on there. Its attack will hit the bat, destroying the bat conveniently for us, so we don't have to. And it will take uh, two damage when that enemy spawns. So, building will be safe. Firefly will take some damage. Bat will be one. One of the two bats will be destroyed, and there'll be three enemies down. And that leaves Isabel to deal with this firefly. Now this will be wounded. It'll be down to two hit points. So she'd just have to move to, say, a spot like here, where she'd be able to shoot it. Now that's not that's not amazing, because if if this firefly is sitting there, and Isabel sits here and shoots, she'll do two damage here. I didn't upgrade it, did I? No. And the knockback will push her into this alpha firefly. That's actually great. It'll do two damage to this alpha firefly and one to herself. Um, which doesn't get absorbed by armor. Armor doesn't protect you from being pushed. Now that does mean we won't pick up the time pod because we won't be sitting in a spot where we can to do so. But that's okay. We will kill three enemies and the last one will be down to one hit point if my calculations are correct. The only question is do I want to sit here and stop a new enemy spawning? next turn to do when I do the lightning attack or do I want to sit here actually if I no if I stand here 
then I could lightning all three. But then we won't get the acid that destroyed for us. So I'm actually going to stand here. I'll take one damage. But I'll stop an enemy spawning. We'll have two enemies left to deal with next turn. One of them on one hit point. So pretty sure we'll be able to clean both of them up and destroy the second acid path. Which is one of our objectives after all. So and it gives the time bot a better, better chance of surviving. So let's start by going there and killing these two. Thanks to the acid we get double damage. As long as we don't step in it, I'm, I'm happy that it exists. Right, so Bethany comes up here, drops a rock. Oh no. I've messed up. I messed up. So, what I was thinking, I come here, shoot this one, which will kill it. Have I messed up? Oh no, I haven't. Oh, I thought I messed up because I thought shooting this meant I would end up pushing this one into the acid. That would have been fine either way, you know, to be honest. I will have no enemies to deal with next turn. Okay. Uh, right, let's go, let's go with plan A. Let's, let's do some damage. Kill one alpha fly, hurt the other, other one, hurt ourselves just a little bit, thanks to it being pushed into the second alpha. Problem solved. So we'll have one enemy, they'll be down to one hit point, one enemy to deal with next turn, and they're gonna destroy the vat for us, you know? This'll be nice. So we'll absolutely be able to get the time pod and destroy the second bat. Okay. Oh, and it's got acid on itself. How nice. Alright, this means next turn we're probably going to have, you know, a pile to deal with. That's fine. Alright, so, I was wrong about the acid map. It doesn't spread extra acid, pools of acid around. It merely makes a tile full of acid. Um, so we can pull enemies into that to drown them in acid. That sounds even better than drowning them in water. So what have we got? Alpha Firefly, which takes double damage. Um... What's the best way to deal with it? Probably just drop a rock on it. I think... Israel... Probably wants to be... Yeah. There's nowhere Israel can sit to shoot this Asphalt. But I think that's okay. I can go, now that I know that it doesn't actually spread acid all around, I can actually just go and lightning it. There should be no problem with that. If I do that, then I can move Isabel up here, shoot the firefly to kill it, and push myself back onto the time pod so we secure the time pod. I think that's how that'll work. And that leaves me with a rock free to probably stop one enemy spawning so we only deal with four instead of five. Let's give that a go. Zap. Alright, two pools of acid. Now, if Isabel's up here somewhere, she'll be get to, able to get to the other side of them to more easily pull enemies into them. Now that now those pools of acid are actually really handy. So if I sit here and fire this, yeah, that'll push me back onto the time pod and it will kill that firefly. Yay! Two birds with one stone, as it were. Which enemy do I want to stop spawning? Probably the one closest to the front. So let's just block it. This one spawns acid, so we get double damage to it immediately. These ones we'll just have to deal with as they turn up. Leaper, or Alpha Leaper rather. This spidery thing, which I've never seen before. Alpha Firefly, and an Alpha Hornet. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, uh, what is it? It is a spider. Well, I said it was a spidery thing. It's only got six legs apparently, which is unusual for spiders, but okay. Tiny offspring, throw a sticky egg that hatches into a spiderling, and more importantly, it seems to web everything around it. So we don't have a spiderling yet if we destroy the egg this turn, and we're gonna have to. It's only one hit point, so it shouldn't be too hard, but we're going to have to destroy it if uh, Rockstar is going to be able to move, and Rockstar is going to have to move if she's going to have a chance of doing any damage to an enemy. So someone's going to have to destroy that egg somehow. 
okay, also, Wed, with our Alpha Leaper, is uh, Grapple Pie here. Which I'm not so keen on. Uh, and four damage, well, the Alpha Leaper does five damage, and so she would actually take four, one, only one less thanks to the armor, but you can see that would almost kill her. So that's not really great. From the other side, we've got the Alpha Hornet attacking for two damage. Um, so, Zappy Kill can get out of the way easy, like, easily enough, but uh, Gravel Pie's a little stuck here. Now, uh, what are we going to do? We need to stop this attack. We need to get them out of the range of the attack. We might have to let the Spiderling Hatch just... Just to, because we can't do anything else. I don't know. Can I push the Leaper? I can certainly lightning it. I don't have any way of pushing it, uh, except by shooting it, which isn't good enough, I think, right now. I can lightning it to kill it, so that's no problem. Uh, that leaves us with a Firefly, an Alpha Firefly, to deal with. And... Actually, that's probably alright. The Grapple Fire will be free once the Leaper's dead. And... Where can we pull the Firefly to? We could put, we could move here and pull the Firefly to here, which would hit Rockstar's shield. And then Rockstar's shield would be gone. Yeah, you know, that's not great, but it's better than nothing. Alternatively, we can move here. Uh, one, two, three. No, we can't get there. We could move here and shoot it, but then we'd end up in the attack. We could move here and shoot it. Yeah, pushing it here so its attack is harmless, doing a little damage to it, and pushing ourselves backwards to there. That's all right. That's acceptable. That leaves Rockstar and the Rock unable to hit the Spiderling next to her and unable to be anywhere go anywhere particularly useful. Now we could use it to block an enemy spawn um, and that way next time we'll only have the Spider and the Alpha Firefly and the Alpha Hornet to, de to deal with uh, and the Spiderling. So plus one of the spawns, oh dear. Because I'm only, I'm only looking so far at a single kill uh, I'm not so sure. How, what's the... The rock only does three damage, so... If Isabel moves here and grapples the Firefly... Yeah, it would hit the shield harmlessly, but we still wouldn't be able to kill it. She can't get to the other side to shoot it and drop a rock on it. And Rockstar can't get free on her own. Will repairing remove webs? No. So. Uh, why couldn't the Hornet sit there? I don't know. Now, if, it's, if we shoot the Hornet, we will kill it. Actually, okay, let's let's leave Grapple Pie just for the moment. Rockstar can drop a, drop a rock here, pushing the Firefly out of the way all by herself. So the Firefly will not actually be a nuisance to us. It'll, its attacker will be neutralized. So Rockstar can be useful as it stands. That leaves Isabel free. So that means Isabel can actually, Zappy Kill could move here or somewhere, and Isabel can uh, then use a grapple to pull the Hornet to this spot. And then Zappy Kill and Lightning chain through Isabel, sorry, doing a little damage there, but that's why we gave her extra health. Um, and it will kill the Alpha Hornet and the Alpha Leaper at once, because the Alpha Hornet, it'll take six damage because it's acid, it'll take double damage. That leaves us next turn with one, two, three, four, five enemies. But we got rid of two alphas, and I think getting rid of two alphas is, is out of three is a good thing to do. That's better than only killing one. Definitely better than only killing one. We won't have any damage to this, but uh, we can probably rectify that next turn. So let's let's move it out of the way. Now it's harmless for now. Let's move here and get ready to do some lightning. But before we do some lightning, let's pull a hornet towards us. Alright, and let's do lightning. Unfortunately, that's going to do two damage to Isabel's tank, but she'll still have four hit points left, and there's only one more turn, so that's great. Alright, problems are being solved. No buildings are under threat. That's good. Both objectives are... well, all the objectives are done. 
So as long as we keep the building safe and don't actually lose any of our units, we're not doing too badly at all. The question is, what can Spiderlings do? I don't know. And great, everything's getting more health. And, oh, we have two units at once. I should have seen that coming. Alright. Alright. Last turn. So the Hornet is threatening those buildings, and the Alpha Firefly is also threatening those buildings. The Spiderling is threatening these buildings. All we need to do is deal with those three enemies. We do not need to do anything else. We don't need to deal with the Blood Scion if we don't need to. Even though it's giving all the enemies... Uh, what does it do? All other vec heal one at the start of the turn. So it's it's healing them. I've, act I've actually never seen the Blood Scion before. It, it heals them one at the start of their turn. But it doesn't matter. If their attack's harmless, they won't have another turn anyway. And it won't stop the Spiderling being killed. So, how do we do this? Unfortunately, that's three enemies to neutralize. And it feels to me like we're only going to have two... Uh, it feels to me like we're only going to have two turns... Sorry, two moves to do it in. Because someone's going to deal with this spiraling so that we're not webbed. And that's probably going to have to be... Something like this. Just push into the acid, which is not great. Uh, alternatively, we could just lightning it. But better, we could lightning this direction. Now that would kill the two enemies we don't need to kill. Uh, and not actually do anything about that firefly. That's not great. That's not great at all. Hmm. Can't use my... Uh, flipper either because there's no empty spaces. So it'd be nice to kill two enemies, but we don't need to kill them, we need to save the buildings. And an alpha does three damage. Either of these, that does two, either of these is probably guaranteed, not certain, there's a chance, but almost guaranteed these two buildings would be killed. Spider we can obviously do. We can drop a rock. We can drop another rock and move the alpha firefly out of the way, for example. But it doesn't resolve the hornet problem. More importantly, if we can just stick an enemy, or sorry, stick a unit in the path of the Alpha Firefly, we can absorb its attack. But drop it, if she, if she Rockstar can't do that on her own. If she moves here and drops a rock on the Alpha Hornet, then the Alpha Hornet still won't be dead. It'll be on one hit point. It's not good enough, or well, not bad enough for it. So. I'm more inclined to think, like, if we let any of these enemy attacks stay, it's got to be the spiderling here. We, we do need to neutralize these two. I mean, what am I talking about? If I move here, I can't throw a rock because my weapon will be waterlogged anyway, so... What to do, what to do. How do I move the Hornet out of the way? Pushing or pulling? Drop a rock next to it, like here. Well, anywhere, either side doesn't matter, but uh, drop a rock next to it seems to be. So probably stop there, drop a rock there. It's resolved. One turn used. One of the attacks we need to neutralize, neutralized. Now, uh, the grappling hook could be used to grapple herself free from the thing, but that doesn't help uh, Zappy Kill get free, so. If we do anything, it's going to be shooting that, I think. That leaves Zappy Kill free to what? That does three damage, so Zappy Kill can just go sit in the way. And take and absorb it. That's all we need to do. Unfortunately, that leaves a, the, the spiderling that we cannot stop, but we'll have to trust the luck that that building won't be destroyed. If it is, it's still only one power lost. It's a better situation than either of these, or both of these, more likely getting destroyed. Every, every time I come up with a plan like this, especially when it involves, you know, having to let an attack happen, I, I, I always think, surely there's a way, surely there's a way I can make a perfect move, kill all the enemies we need to kill, or stop all the attacks we need to stop. Uh, but, um, I just don't see it. 
You know how I hate scorpions because they web. You know, they tend to move up to us and web us. Well, I now hate spiders even more because they can web two of us at once. That's just rude. That's just really rude. Right. We have to be free of this spiderling. And I'm going to end up in acid. Hooray! So. Uh, does it say anything about acid here? Well, the acid apparently is neutralized. Give, take, may it take damage and neutralize the armor. But it's not saying anything else about it. So I still don't really know how acid works. I'm not going to find out this this game because uh, we're, we're going to be oh, this mission's going to be over in a minute. So let's come up here and just tank an attack for three damage. We can do that. We've got four hit points left. It's not great, but it won't kill us. And that's a flying enemy, so I can't push it into the water anyway. So I think we just move it out of the way so its attack is not going to destroy anything we care about. And this attack is going to go ahead. I don't like this move much, but uh... oh, I have an action available anyway. All right, let's let's go and do some. Let's go kill some enemies just just because we can. Take that. Still, same situation hap is is well, situation still the same. Spiderling is going to attack a building. We'll see whether or not it kills it. Ouch. 95 casualties. Well, I'm sorry to those 95. I wish I could have saved you. Mission complete. 100% of the vats were destroyed and the chemicals released. Our sensors are already picking up diminished vac activity in the region. So we destroyed both acid vats and got two rep. We protected a time pod and we'll see in a minute what's that in, what is in that. We did not protect all civilians. Uh, 95 of them died. It's a shame. We got a bunch of XP but everyone was already max level so it doesn't really matter. What's in the time pod? It is just a reactor core. That's nice. Uh, they're always good. Obviously it's nicer when you get two things, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Not that we're really begging for uh, time pods and stuff right now, but everything's a bonus. Alright. So, gonna do another mission now, and we have nano silos and containment zone D to choose from, or even still we could go and do the wasteland. Uh, I'm seeing a reactor core up here though, and either of these would unlock the territory so we could take it for our next mission. And, you know, reactor cores, I'd never have enough. So I always want more. Let's have a bit. We have a reactor core to spend, and I'm gonna look at where we can deploy that in a minute, but let's have a look at what we're dealing with so I know whether things like um, the building chain on the electric rip will be useful or not. So, nano silos. Normally we use conveyor yards to ferry waste vats, but you and the Blitzkrieg may be able to use the conveyors against the VEC. So there's conveyor belts. We'll, we'll push units around the map. So every unit on this tile will be pushed some distance, ultimately to the VAT. I presume it doesn't push everything all the way into the VAT, but if it does, that would be very nice. Then we just have to try and get the VEC on there and watch them all uh, fall in. That would be fun. <laughs> Kill at least seven enemies and protect the power generator, which is right there next to the conveyor belt. Uh, there's a couple of isolated buildings, but building chain would not be the most useful option. There's a nice fat here to pull enemies into, but they'd have to be on one side or the other of it already for that situation to arise, so, or to push them into. And there's nothing really to attack on this side, so it's unlikely it would be there. They might turn up there, but chances are it wouldn't see any use. All right, that's another challenge. Let's see what containment zone D is all about. Do as you must, Commander. The Vec must be driven back and our people protected. So it's the same as own. Uh, block Vec from spawning three times and protect the emergency batteries. You know what? That uh, sounds a little bit boring. The conveyor belt looks like fun. So, we'll do this mission in a second. I'm not sure the building chain is going to be worthwhile on this map. Maybe. Probably not. Let's see what we can spend our single core on. Um... We could get bonus health. We can't really get bonus damage. Ally immune. Well, 
I almost never have to... Well, I've never yet seen an opportunity where I wanted to throw allies. Freeing them from a web is, is the possibility where it might be useful, but... It's, unless they have to be next to me already? I don't know. It seem, seems unnecessary. I'm much more likely to use it on enemies. Grapple Pie. So, shield ally with the grapple hook. Again, shields are a more useful thing than merely being able to throw an enemy without hurting them. Could be useful. We don't have any allied units on that mission to, that we want to shield, so... I'm kind of more inclined to turn our self-damage up. Uh, it'll be self-damage total 2, one of which will be absorbed by armor, so total 1. With our 7 health, that means we can shoot our cannon a lot, and as long as we avoid lightning chaining Isabel, she'll be able to do a lot of damage on her own with just the cannon. That's most likely. Let's just see if Rockstar has anywhere to spend it. Bonus health! No. Don't need it yet. Let's solo core, get some extra damage, see how it goes out. Now let's just do a quick test. Uh, look at this! It does 3 damage to a unit with only 2 health. Uh, it's not really the best. They haven't given us the best enemies there on the test. Is there a better one? Alright. Okay. Oh, so acid neutralizes the armor. If this test is telling me the right thing. Oh, wow. Uh, let's not do that. So, acid will cause double damage to us. That's bad. It neutralizes the armor as well. So, if, if Isabel's acided, uh, then she is really in trouble. With her, if she uses a cannon. Look, takes four damage from it instead of one. Uh, obviously, the enemy's in trouble as well. So, I was wrong about acid. Uh, you, you know, clogging our weapons like water does and stopping us firing. It just seems to cause us to take double damage as well. And it and it neutralizes armor. So now the acid's clear because we're repaired. When we do this attack, you only take one damage. Okay, that's good to know about. That's really good to know how acid works without having to uh, purposefully step into it in an actual mission. Alright, we've got our unstable cannon with bonus damage. Let's go see how these conveyor belts work. So, to begin with, we have an Alpha Crab, a Firefly, an Alpha Leaper, and an Alpha Hornet. They're really throwing the Alpha enemies on us now. I'm not sure I like that so much. I guess that's what happens. The, lo you know, the longer we spend on a mission, the more likely that is to happen. Uh, what does the conveyor do? This tile will push any unit in the direction marked on the belt. Now, I guess we'll find out how far it pushes it. We've got to kill certain enemies. Where am I going to deploy? You might as well sit up the front as usual. Now we've got really limited deployment space and actually kind of limited movement space. I don't know if we can move through acid like we can with water, but hopefully. I didn't actually stop on the previous mission to see, but uh, it behaves like water, but it inflicts acid on surviving units. So presumably we can walk through it, but we don't want to stop on it. Okay. So. I guess we want to grapple people onto the conveyor belt or something? I don't know. Let's, we'll see, we'll see. I'll start here, see what happens. And another time pod. Okay, wow. I was not expecting that, but I'm not going to complain. Alright. It seems to only move them one square, which isn't really exciting. Uh, unless it moves further. I didn't actually see the arrows animated. Uh, I only I wasn't really looking at the time, and I thought it only moved one space, but maybe it moved further. I guess I will find out. So we've got an Alpha Hornet that's attacking the power generator, so we need to stop that. We want to get that power back. We have the Alpha Crab attacking this building. We have the Alpha Leaper, who is not attacking anything, thankfully, and we have a Firefly, who is also not, a, sorry, who is attacking that building. So we have three attacks we need to neutralize. Hornet, Crab, and Firefly. So... I can move up here, and lightning something more. I don't want to stop on that, because I'm still unsure of how it works. If an enemy ends up on it, great. And I think I'll try and get that to happen this turn anyway. So I can see what happens. I'll 
try and get the Hornet there and see what happens. Because its attack will be neutralized if, if it's sitting here. And uh, that way I have a chance to learn. But I might not be able to. If I come up here and use Lightning, it'll kill these two and wound that one so it'll be on two hit points. So I'll need a second attack on that. That's right, I can shoot it with my unstable cannon, which is three. Uh, actually, I should do that first. Shoot it with my unstable cannon first, because otherwise I'll push it into Zapikil and hurt Zapikil. That leaves Rockstar free to drop a rock here and push the Hornet onto the conveyor belt so that the Hornet's attack is neutralized and we can find out what the conveyor belt does. So first, we don't want to go here and fire because we'll push ourselves into the mountain and do damage. So we'll push ourselves onto the time pod again, just as we did last mission. Um, incidentally, push the crab in the way of the firefly, but they're all going to be dead, so that doesn't really matter. We saved the time pod. Let's go zap all these enemies. It's a shame when XP isn't very useful anymore, because we're getting so much of it now. Uh, let's find out how this conveyor belt works. Because right now it's here next to this mountain. Where is it going to be next turn? So the very first thing that's going to happen is the environment, the conveyor belt's going to move. Then the enemy's going to attack, and we're going to get two new spawns. He only moves one. Okay, that conveyor belt's a lot less fun than I thought, because unless the enemy goes and sits there, or maybe there and we push it there, what are we going to do? Oh, oh no, I just saw a spider, and it's webbed Rockstar, who's the least able to escape and... You know how I said chain through buildings? Wouldn't be needed this mission. If I if I move up here, lightning attack, and we had chain through buildings, it will go through there and kill the spiderling too. Well, that'll teach me. It can always be useful, even when I'm not expecting it. Let's undo the move. Uh, and incidentally, that would destroy the shield here, but not actually hurt Rockstar. Uh, if, if we didn't have the shield, that would kill Rockstar, because she doesn't have enough health to survive a single attack from the electric whip. We have a new blood scion, giving everyone else regeneration, so that's fine. If we only wound them, that's a problem. If we kill them, it's not a problem, obviously. Uh, I assume if these two were both on the conveyor, the push doesn't really matter, because uh, they'll be... Uh, what's we got? They'll both be pushed at the same time. So except for slowly moving enemies to the pit of acid, the conveyor belt seems, I don't know, kind of kind of pointless. It moves an enemy just before they fire. So yeah, if they're sitting there to try and attack the, one of these buildings, sure, it'll move them out of the way so they're going to attack this instead. That's not exciting. Maybe in a different map set up, maybe with more conveyors or something, be useful. It's just not, not really a useful thing here. So what do we do about these? I do want to kill a spy alpha spider just so we don't have another one to, a spider link to deal with next turn. Well, we'll have to kill this one, but uh, well, at least next turn. But uh, if we kill the alpha spider, it'll keep making spider links, keep webbing us. I do not want it to keep webbing us. That's the worst. Uh, I don't care about the blood siren if I'm planning to kill enemies rather than merely wound them. So can we kill both of these? I can lightning them both, and then I can use grapple pie to shoot one of them into the other, which should cause them both to die. So I do that first, uh, which will hurt them both quite a lot. And then she'll be sitting on one of these to block a spawn next to her anyway. And thanks to her armor, I won't even take damage from it. Oh, well, that will kill both anyway, okay. Well, that's one problem solved. Um, hmm, actually, so if I can kill one of them anyway that way, do I need to use lightning? Can I kill the Hornet with Rockstar? No, but I could push it back onto the conveyor again. Um, for all the good that'll do. And that wouldn't let me go up and... Well, firstly, Rockstar can't move anyway unless I can kill that first. I move, I'm not going to go, even though I'm flying, I can actually safely sit up the Vat of Acid I'm flying, but I can't actually get to that square to lightning the spider, if, even if I wanted to. So I guess we do... Hmm, can we deal with the Blood Zion as well, just 
Just for cleanliness. I don't think so. I don't think so. So we're going to lightning the hornet, we're going to shoot the alpha spider, and blood Siren will still be living. And so will the spiderling. Alright, let's just do it. One down. I'm not going to sit on that. I'm not going to sit on that. Two down. We have a rock. I don't know, do we have anywhere useful to put it? Not really. So let's not fire it. I could throw it with a bit of acid. Ha, ah, fun. Pointless, but fun. Uh, I suppose I could have pushed this, but uh, only if it landed on land, I guess. Alright, let's see what happens next turn. Spidely Hatches, Alpha Firefly, and Alpha Hornet. Oh, this setup looks very similar to what we had before. So... It's gonna attack and hurt the shield. Well, kill the shield, but not actually do any damage. That's... I don't really care, but I do, have actu I do actually have the ability to move, so I can actually just move out of the way. And might do that. Now... We have an Alpha Firefly to kill. And... Or... To block its attack. It does, what, three damage, so... Grapple Pie would take two hit points from it, and be left with two hit points on the last turn. Zappy Kill would take three hit points from it, and be left with two hit points on the last turn. So far, so much the same. We do have to neutralize the Hornet's attack, which again, I'm thinking you just throw a rock here, push it onto the conveyor, uh, problem solved, and move here before I do that, so I don't even lose my shield. It won't help, the spider limb will still probably be a pest next turn. I'll probably just move here and threaten me, or move there and threaten the building. But we'll neutralize the Hornet's attack, leaving these two to deal with the others. So, could shoot, could kill the Scion, for all the good it does. Um, it's not sitting next to the pit of acid, so I can't shoot it into the acid, unfortunately. It would be much nicer if I could. I can't get to the other side of the acid in order to pull it into the acid either, so... Pulling and pushing the Alpha Firefly doesn't really seem to be an option. I can't get to this side of it in order to shoot it onto here either, because that would do three damage from the cannon, and then two when it spawns and kill it. That would be nice, but I can't seem to do that. So I think we're going to have to tag team the Zappy Kill and Grapple Pie. Both of them attack the, the Firefly in order to kill it. Because I'd rather have it dead than and merely stop its attack. Question is, do I want to stop another attack, another spawn, while I do so? I think the answer is yes. We've already got an alpha to deal with. We've got a sound. We'll have three spawns. I don't want to have five enemies, even if one of them is meaningless. I don't want to have five enemies to deal with. So, actually, I can kill. If I move here and shoot that, I will kill the sound and take two damage myself. And then, no, I won't take one more, thanks to the armor, uh, when the spawn happens. So I'll be on two hit points for the last turn. Meh, that's probably okay, that's kind of fun. Um, that means I should do this first, so I don't have to move him further afield. field. Uh, oh, undo. Undo the moves. Um, do this first, so it doesn't chain through. Oh wait, undo. And actually, you can undo multiple moves. That's good to know. Yeah, okay, so you can experiment with moves. I don't know about whether, the, if acid effects happen or not, if you can still undo them, but you can experiment with moves without committing. So, if instead of this, she still takes two damage, and then when she shoots it, she ends up on the conveyor belt and doesn't block a spot. That's not good. All right, so the order is important. I might as well, you know, use our hit points to uh, kill the someone, but let's do this first. To win it. Let's do that. Let's kill the Scion and the Firefly at once. Right, and now move out of the way of the Spider's attack. And merely move the Hornet to a useless spot where it can't do any damage. 
All right, let's see what happens. We're gonna have two new enemies. The Hornet's gonna move closer and attack, attack the Acid Pit. Ouch. Um, we got an Alpha Crab and an Alpha Hornet. Wow. They are throwing all the Alphas at us. Oh dear. All right, we can ignore this attack because it's not gonna cause us any problems. We're not webbed in, but uh, Rockstar's pretty hemmed in thanks to her own rocks and the spiderling. Um, but she can neutralize the Hornet's attack by moving here, throwing a rock on the conveyor belt, which will push the Hornet over the pit. It won't fall in because it flies. It'll kill the spiderling for us. Which I think, oh no, it doesn't attack first. So the spiderling's attack can still happen first. We're going to neutralize the spiderling, the Hornet, and the crab. So. If we move here and throw a rock, it will not push the spiling. Um, so how do we neutralize the spiling? We can't get there to throw a rock right now. Thanks to this rock. That's got five hit points. Um, so it's going to take it a lot to damage it. However, if I lightning it... Regardless of anything else I do, if I lightning it from wherever, that will destroy these rocks, and that lets Rockstar be able to move. Which is good, so Rockstar might be able to come here, and drop a rock on the Spiderling and deal with Spiderling. That's that was not a bad plan. Uh, I think I can actually just move here, completely out of everyone's way, and lightning it. Yeah. Okay. So then it'll be on two hit points. Uh, and... Uh, we'll still have to neutralize the Hornet. And the crab and the spiderling. I'll have heard it but not neutralize it. What's this attacking? Those two tiles. If instead I came up here and flipped it, then it'll be attacking these two tiles, which will be empty. Hopefully. Okay, if I plan for those two well, yeah, because Rockstar won't be able to get out of there. Uh, so I can neutralize its attack without having to kill it. Okay, that's probably better because I have three attacks to deal with. Spidling is first. That's the worst thing. Uh, oh, wow. She only on one hit point. I thought she was going to be on two. Ah, oh, she took damage. Uh, the, oh. the armor doesn't stop spawn damage then, I guess. Well, it's a good thing I didn't miscalculate and get a kill. That would have been quite a mess. But that means... Damn it, that means I can't use the cannon. Because that would kill her. So it has to be grapple. That's right, I can pull the, I can pull the Hornet to neutralize it. To park it up here somewhere. I could even make it uh, hit the crab, perhaps. You know, pull it all the way up here. Not that it matters. It would not do enough damage to kill it. But uh, it's always fun. So... Vice Fist, the Crab, to neutralize its attack. Grapple the Hornet, to neutralize its attack. And then what? Oh yeah, she can move here and throw a rock to push the spider into the acid pit. Problem solved. There's the spider that was the hardest one to deal with because it was just out of the way, a lot too far away from these people. All right, let's go. Now it's attacking empty space, so that's fine. And just for funsies, let's pull the Hornet. Uh, I'll do that move, let me think about this. The conveyor happens first, so if I did that, then the Hornet would be doing two damage here. That, okay, it wouldn't hurt, but it would not be great. The Hornet's only attacking two spaces, so I want to pull it to, I don't know, let's say here. The conveyor's gonna happen first. So the Hornet will end up here, it'll attack a rock, meaninglessly, and empty space. Uh, that will attack empty space, that will attack empty space, no buildings under threat. None of our people under threat of dying, thankfully. So let's let it happen. Boom, that's a big explosion. All right. Everybody saved. All objectives complete. 
The conveyor yard is secure. Thank you, Commander. We had not thought to use the conveyor belts in a military capacity. And I can see why, because they're really not very useful. At least not in this particular configuration. So we killed seven enemies, we protected the power generator, so we got a rep, we got our power back up, which is great, I'm happy for that. And we got a time pod, so we also saved all the civilians. So let's see what's in the time pod. It is another reactor core and a confused shot science class weapon. Normally it would be free, but it costs one power core because we don't if we we're using it in a mech that's not science class. Fire a projectile that flips a target's attack direction. Well, that's interesting. And we even get a power core to power it. Uh, the question is, is that better than any of our existing weapons that we've, that we've currently de deployed? I'm not sure it is, but I'll have a think about that on the in the next episode. Uh, it's getting late, so I'm going to cut this episode short here. I'm not sure exactly how long it's been. I think it's been a bit shorter than usual. Um, but I need to have dinner. So thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you here for episode 11 when we go to the scrap heap.